In this lesson, we will extend our discussion on if and if else statement. We know that after the if statement, there is a block of if statement and there can be a block of else statement. Secondly, you should keep in mind that else is always linked to some if statement. We can have if without else, but we cannot have else without if. Then in the block of if or else, there can be one statement or there can be multiple statements. And even we can have another if statement inside the block of if or the corresponding else statement. We saw independent ifs in last lesson, but that second if was not inside the block of if or else statement. And that's why it was independent if. But we can have an if statement inside the block of if statement or inside the block of an else statement. This is known as nested if statement. We will first try to see such scenarios in daily life example. We have many ifs in our daily life. We do many things based on the conditions. For example, if it is Sunday, we will not go to university. If it is raining, we will not play the match. So knowingly or not knowingly, we have many ifs and if else scenarios in our daily life. Let's see one of such scenario over here. For example, if you have to head to some other city in emergency and you have two options, you can go by air or by road. If you are preferring to go by air, then this is the if else scenario. The condition is that if the flight is available or not. If the condition is true, you will take the flight. If the condition is false, you will have to go by road. Over here, I have written this scenario in a programming-like structure. I mean, it is not a program, but the same flowchart is presented here in a programming style. In program, we do not write condition like that, but it is just indicating that the given scenario can be written in programming style like so. That if flight is available, take the flight, else go by road. This is simple if-else statement, but usually conditions are not that simple every time. If the flight is available, then there might be some options for the different flights. And then you will have to choose one of the options based on some condition. So maybe you want to have a cheaper flight. So let's say three airlines provide their services to the city you want to go. PIA, AirBlue and Qatar Airways. You know that cheaper is the PIA flight then the air blue and then the Qatar Airways. So if the flight is available, the next condition for you will be if the PIA flight is available or not. If PIA flight is available, you will choose that. And if that is not available, then again you have another condition that air blue is available or not. If you have air blue, you will choose that. And if not, then the only option is Qatar Airways. So we can represent the whole scenario in this flowchart where you can see that this is the major if condition that flight is available or not. If available, then you have this condition that PIA flight is available or not. If available, you will take the PIA flight. If not, you will check another condition that air blue flight is available or not. And based on that, either you will take the air blue flight or the Qatar Airways flight. Now these conditions are not independent. Suppose that you are checking this major condition that flight is available or not. And and the result is false that flight is not available then everything on the right side is meaningless if the flight is not available you will not check if PIA flight is available and you will not check if air blue flight is available because the outer condition that flight is available is false so it means everything that you have in your mind to choose between PIA air blue or Qatar Airways has no sense now of course flight is not available so you will just move to the no part or the else part of this particular flowchart so this is the example of a net nested if else statement that when one if statement is true we have some further conditions and there can be further ifs or ifs else over there which we need to see so the simplest nested if means one if statement inside another if statement we call that as inner if statement and the major if statement is known as outer if statement for example flight is available is outer if statement and if PIA flight is available or not is the inner if statement of that if the outer if statement is false the inner if statements will never be executed you can think of if statement as a locked door. If the condition is true, it means you have the keys for that lock and you can open that lock and you can enter inside. If the condition is false, it means that you don't have the keys for that lock and there is no way you can enter into that door. The inner if statement is like a door inside another door. So if you don't have the keys of the outer door, then you can never enter into the inner door even if you have the keys for the inner door. It will be more clear when we will see some practical examples. Now coming back to this scenario, 
The else here means that flight is not available and you have to go by road and maybe we have further options when we have to go by road. For example, if you have to move from Lahore to Islamabad, we have two options by road. We can choose the GT road or the motorway. So in this major else block, we can have another condition that we want to prefer the motorway but if it is not available, then of course we will go by GT road. Before going to that scenario, first see the programming like structure of the previous flowchart where we have the outer if statement that flight is available or not and that if has the else shown over here that if flight is not available go by road but if flight is available then inside the if block we have some other conditions like if PIA flight is available or not but see carefully that this inner if must start from an indentation because it is the part of the outer if block and this must start from an indentation now this thing take PIA is the block of this inner if statement so it should have an extra indentation then it will become the block of this if statement statement. Furthermore, you can see the indentations on the other ifs and else statements. So this is by indentation that we specify the blocks of the if and else statement and for the inner ifs and else there will be an extra indentation. Now this is the flowchart where we have two options for the road as well. If the motorway bus is available, we will take the motorway bus, otherwise we will take the GT road bus. Please spare some time and relate these programming like statements with the flowcharts. Now let's do some programming tasks and see the use of nested if else statements. I will start with the task of taking three numbers from the user and printing the largest of those. Firstly, I will do that without using nested if else concept. So I have taken the three numbers from the user. I don't know which one is the greatest. So first I can write the condition if A is largest of the three and that will be if A is greater than B and A is greater than C. I will say that A is the largest. And likewise, I should have condition if B is the largest or if C is the largest. These three if statements are not nested if statements, they are independent if statements. And one way to see that is that all three if statements are starting from the same level, means there is no difference of indentation between the three. So these three are independent if statements. So even if the first condition is true, the interpreter will move to the second and third condition. If I enter 220 and 20, the program has ended without any output display. What happened is that none of the condition is true because we are checking for the greater than operator and the last two numbers entered were same. So instead of greater than, we can use greater than equal to operator. In Visual Studio Code, you can press the Alt key and click on multiple locations of your program and you will see multiple cursors. Then whatever you type, that will be inserted on all of those locations. So I have changed all greater than operators to greater than equal to operator. And now for 220 and 20, it is displayed that 20 is the greatest, but that is being displayed two times because now the two conditions on line number 5 and line number 7 both are true. And so we are getting the two print statement. If we enter 30, 30 and 30, 30 is greatest is displayed three times because all three conditions are true. What can be the solution for this case? The solution is very simple. Instead of this print statement that this number is greatest, I can assign that variable a to some other variable x. So nothing will be printed but x will have the value of a. Similarly for the second case, I will write x equal to b and for third case, I will write x equal to c. 
So you see depending upon the condition which is true, x will get the value of a, b or c and now even if all three conditions are true, which will be the case when all three numbers are same, so a will be assigned to x, then b will be assigned to x and then c will be assigned to x. So at the end x has the largest value but nothing is displayed and we can come out of the if statement and write a print statement and display the value of the x as the largest value. This print statement is not part of any if statement and of course it will be executed on only once. So now we see just the one print statement. Now let's do the same task using nested if else statements. I'm writing here if a is greater than or equal to b and I'm not applying a check of a with c. I'm not writing any statement in the if block at present and I'm now writing else statement. So we have if and else block the condition is a is greater than or equal to b. So if we talk about this if block when the condition is true it means that a is greater than or equal to b and that obviously means that b cannot be greater. b is out of the game. Let me write that here as a comment and secondly it means that the greatest value will be either a or c. Now what about the else block? Else means the condition of line number 3 is false meaning that a is not greater than or equal to b so that obviously means that a cannot be greater. Now either it is b or c which will be the greatest. So what we can do now? Inside the if block where b cannot be the greatest and we have to decide between a and c so we can write another if statement that if a is greater than or equal to c now that means a will be the greatest. And if I am writing an else here this else is linked to this if and this whole if else statement is inside the if block of line number 3 if statement. So this if else block is active only when the outer if on line number 3 is true meaning that a is greater than b. And this particular else means that the if statement of line number 6 is false meaning that a is not greater than c which means that c will be the greatest value. Now coming to this else block, here A is out of the game and the comparison is between B and C. So I can write another if statement that if B is greater than or equal to C, then it means B will be the greatest value. And this else means B is not greater than C, so C will be the greatest value. Now this print statement is outside all ifs and else and will be executed in any case. The indentation is really important here and you can identify different blocks from their indentation level. On Visual Studio Code, you can see these vertical lines as well. What that shows is that the statements or the code starting from that line are at one level. This also helps to see the linked if statement for any else statement. Let's run this code in step by step mode. It is executing line number 1 and asking for the three numbers. After entering the numbers, interpreter has stopped on line number 2. You can see the values of a, b and c on the variable window. This condition a is greater than or equal to b is false. So the interpreter will jump to the else block of this if statement. The else block is starting from line number 8. So everything in between that will be jumped over. And you can see that. Now b is greater than or equal to c is also false. So interpreter will jump to the else block of this if statement. And that else block is starting from line number 11. And then to the next line which is the last line and will print the output result. You must run this code step by step and try different values. And you will obviously learn how the sequence of nested if else statement works. I will move to the next task and again this is something we did earlier but this time we will do it using the nested if else statement. The task is to take 5 subjects marks from the user, find the average and then print the appropriate message depending upon the average score. If average is greater than 90, we are saying that you are an outstanding student.
if average is greater than 80 we are saying that you are a good student If you remember from the last lesson if the average comes out to be greater than 90 for example 92 the first if condition is true that will display that you are an outstanding student but second if condition is also true because 92 is greater than 80 and the second message will also be displayed but we do not want to display the second message so what we did previously was that we updated the if statement of line number 5 that average is greater than 80 and less than 90 but a better approach will be that if i use an else block for the if statement of the line number 3, and then i will make this if statement as the block of that else statement by pressing a tab key which will add one indentation now this if statement of line number 6 and the if statement of line number 3 are not independent the if statement of line number 6 is the inner if statement of line number 3 although it is in the else block of the if statement but still it is the inner if statement so see carefully what will happen if the average marks are greater than 90 on line number 3 when average is greater than 90 it means that it will execute the if block and it will not execute the else block so it will skip line number 6 and 7 although the condition is true on line number 6 that average is greater than 80 but because it is the part of the else block and the condition is false on line number 3 so this else block will not get executed so it doesn't matter if the condition of line number 6 is true or not recall the analogy of a door inside another door Now we will reconsider this insurance task we did in one of the previous lessons. We used a lengthy if condition involving 11 ands and ors, but this time we will be doing the same task using the concept of nested if else statement. So these are the inputs taken from the user. Think about the conditions. If the employee is married, he or she is eligible for the insurance. So I can have a condition that if status is married, I can print that he or she is eligible. The gender and age doesn't matter. Now I have the else block and that else means status is not married so now I have to consider the gender and age so I can say if gender is male then again he can be eligible or not eligible based on his age. and this else means the gender is not male which means it will be female inside this if block the status is unmarried the gender is male but still he can be eligible or not eligible based on his age so i can have another if statement on the age of the employee please stop here for a moment and convince yourself that this cursor on line number 11 means that the marital status is unmarried gender is male and age is not greater than 30 so i should write that he is not eligible now this else statement on line number 12 is linked to the if statement of line number 7 which is conditioned on gender being male so this else means the gender is female and the whole thing from line number 7 to line number 12 is the else block of the if statement of line number 4 which means that employee is unmarried in this else block so over here for the unmarried case and for the female gender i should again have a condition on her age Again I will strongly recommend that you should execute this code step by step give different values for the inputs and you will understand very clearly the sequence of this nested if else statements and this is the best way to understand nested if else statement now I'm placing the two codes side by side one written with the long if statement and other written with nested if else statement let me zoom out a little bit and here is the comparison when it is a long condition many times it can be difficult to write correct long conditions and at some later stage if you are working on the same code sometimes it's get difficult to understand that lengthy logic on the nested if else case we have nested ifs and else but the conditions are very simple and usually it is simple to understand the logic there can be a hybrid solution i mean that we can have a little bit of nested if else and a little bit of lengthy conditions let's see that here 
After this if statement, where we check that the employee is married and he or she will be eligible, then in the else block, we know that the status is unmarried, so we will not consider the status over there and can write the lengthy condition on gender and the age. Now this condition is lengthy but not as lengthy as on the right side so it's always a trade-off or a personal preference to use the extent of nested if else state but in many cases you will not be able to avoid nested if else state. Now I will explain a task with two approaches and you will solve that using both of the approaches. The task is that you are taking the day and the month from the user and you have to display the next day to the user. Now we know there are different days in different months, mostly 30 and 31. Feb has 28 days and if it is a leap year, it will have 29 days. But we are not considering the year over here, we are just taking the day and the month from the user so we will not consider the leap year, meaning that Feb has always 28 years. If the day is 7 and the month is 3, the next day is 8. If the day is 30 and the month is 4, the next day is 1. But if day is 30 and month is 3, which is March, the next day will not be 1, but it will be 31. So you can see there will be many conditions we have to check. There will be a very important assumption over here. We will assume that user will enter a valid day and month. For example, he will not enter 30 Feb or he will not enter 31st of April. So user is always entering a valid date in the form of day and month and you have to print the next day. Think about the solution. The first step will be taking day and month from the user that is shown over here. Now we have to apply different checks on the day and month and accordingly we will display the next day. So what can be those conditions? In first approach, I have suggested that think about the cases where the next day will be 1 plus the current day and those are the most of the cases. If you think a little bit, you can see if the day is less than 29 or equal to 29, the next day will always be 1 greater than that. But there can be one exception of Feb because for that after 28, we don't have 29 but 1. So the general case will be if the day is less than or equal to 27, for sure the next day will be 1 plus that. And the same is true for day 29. If day is 29 and we are not considering the leap year, the next day will be 30. So I have written that if statement over here that if day is less than or equal to 27 or day is 29, then the variable next day should be 1 plus d. And then this else means the condition is false, which means we can have day as 28, 30 or 31. For that we can have different if statements. Like the first condition is that if day is 28 and month is 2 which means 28th Feb so the next day should be 1. Then if day is 28 and month is not 2 then the next day is 29. Then if day is 31 then the next day will always be 1 because the entry is always valid entry. Then I have written two if statements and I have left them blank. One is the case of 30 days and the months having 30 days and the other is the case of 30 days having the months of 31 days. So in first case the next day will be the 1 and in second case the next day will be 31. There is another thing to note over here. These five if statements are starting from same level. Among themselves they are independent but all of them are inner ifs of the outer if statement. Then in the second approach, we will do the same task but with a different logic. Over here after taking the day and month from the user, I have written three if statements. One is for month equal to 2 which is Feb. One is for the months having 30 days. And last is the one having the months with 31 days. Now inside these ifs, you will have to consider different days. So complete that logic, test it for different cases and also use the debugging tool to see the working step by step. So that's all from this lesson. Thanks for watching.